Hello again everyone, welcome back to the History Rescuer. My name is India. Today I'm going to be starting an exciting new series that I am currently calling Sunken Histories. So what this series is going to cover is a number of case studies of shipwrecks and underwater archaeological materials that I have found interesting previously in my archaeology courses as well as things that I have researched independently. So to kick off this series, I'm going to be talking about the Steamboat Arabia. Now, Steamboat Arabia was one of the many hundreds of vessels that ran up and down the Missouri River in the 19th and the early 20th centuries. The Missouri River was of course a key component in Western expansion for the US and was one of the key providers of uh, trade and transportation routes for migrants who were moving further inland from the East Coast. So steamers didn't have the best reputation for being the safest mode of transport at the time. However, your options were relatively limited in the 19th century, especially if you were trying to move west. It's believed that over 400 ships actually sank in the Missouri River alone, and 100 of those sank in a 50-year period during the golden era of steamboats in the Missouri River, one of which was the Arabia. So the Arabia was a primarily merchant vessel that was transporting some passengers, but mostly cargo. It had over 200 tons loaded on it the day that it sank, and it was just leaving Kansas City port when about six miles to the northwest, it snagged on a submerged tree and sank. However, there were no casualties as a result of this sinking, and the boat actually went down incredibly slowly to the point where they knew where it was and multiple salvage efforts were made unsuccessfully. Of course, when the boat did finally submerge itself, it was then layered upon with uh, layers and layers of silt over the years and the river Missouri moved about 800 meters away from its original resting place and dried out. So the bank in which the Arabia sat untouched was undisturbed for another century until a small group of researchers and farmers actually found it in a field and started to unearth it from the ground. Now, because it was covered in silt, it had basically entered an anaerobic state that was completely deoxygenized. So there was nothing in there that allowed it to decompose or it was, it was, the decomposition rate was vastly reduced. So when they were digging up the vessel, it was almost completely untouched by time. The collection itself is stunning in that it is full of boots. There are hundreds of pairs of boots that are perfectly preserved and there are hats and there are furs and there are patterned reams of cloth that would be used to make dresses and there are buttons, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of buttons that are all patterned and sort of have this incredible display of colour and detailing and it's a wonderful way of looking into the goods that were required and sought after by those living at the time and living in the specific area of the US. So that's really wonderful. Uh, it also included foodstuffs, so there were pickles on board and lots and lots of jars of foods that were in fact said to be still edible when they were discovered. There are farming tools, there are awl handles, there are axes and hatchets and all of these sorts of items that would be used by agricultural communities and settlements all along the Missouri River. And when they were excavating the ship, they realized as they reached the lower levels that there was in fact one casualty of the Arabia and that was the mule and he was still tethered to his post when the ship went down. When the ship was first discovered it was quite a significant find and is still a significant find in that it is one of the largest collections of American pre-Civil War artifacts. I personally find this site to be interesting and this case study to be uh, of value because it shows that sunken history it doesn't always mean underwater and shipwrecks can be found in some very very unlikely places and it's very very important to recognize that as an archaeologist because when you're looking at things like shipwrecks and sunken cities and all of those sorts of things 
they aren't necessarily as far away in myth as we would like to believe. Coastlines have shifted, uh, riverbeds have shifted, and it's very, very important to look at the geography of the landscape in which you are trying to research these things and understand the context of the time, because without it, you will be up the creek. Mind the pun, sorry. <laughs> If you would like to see some more information, there's a fantastic book called Treasure in the Cornfield, and it's definitely worth having a little read over. There's also an entire chapter in the International Manual of Underwater Archaeology, which is also a fantastic uh, resource if you do want to get into this sort of thing and just do a little bit more reading. And Kansas City does actually have a museum dedicated to these objects. Since 1988, they have been under a constant sort of regime of preservation and restoration so they're still working on the items that came up there were literally thousands and there are roughly 200 on display currently and the aim is of course to try and preserve as much of that uh, history and those physical objects as possible so thank you so much for tuning in I am India and thank you for watching the history rescuer please like and subscribe if you are interested I will be talking about more obscure shipwrecks and archaeological dig sites in the future, as well as all these fantastic niche areas of history. So please tune in and have a lovely evening.